many players have started their open career in style. Ben Hogan won in his one and only appearance. Tom Watson won his first open, as did Bobby Jones. But very few players in the modern era have played so consistently well to start their open career. Even fewer have done so as an amateur. Possibly the most notable exception to this rule is Chris Wood. In 2008 and 2009, a young, fresh-faced Wood, standing at six foot six inches tall, threatened to tower above all others and claim golf's original major. Wood, who has since had great success all over the world, is a player whose open history is inspiring. This is Tales of the Open. This is the story of Chris Wood. I've still to this day, this the most nervous I've ever been over a golf shot. I mean, my dad caddied for me in the tournament and um, what's hilarious is everyone would hit, was hitting irons off the tee. Yeah, it's a tough tee shot the first hit Birkdale and um, I hit driver. I've seen too many of this club hit off this first tee. It's very difficult driving whole wind hard out of the player's left. There's a bunker down at a mound. The bunkers are 220 yards from the tee, about 225 to carry, but there's a big hill covered in long grass. Very narrow strip of fairway to the right of that, and to the right of the fairway is just rubbish and an out-of-bounds fence. So quite brave. Looking back now, I'm thinking, what on earth was I doing? But I just striped it straight down the middle. Great drive, really good start. And then you settle, don't you? And um, yeah, that was that was me underway. Once the first round is underway, or once you're on the golf course, I think, because I think I had a late tea time. I might have been about three o'clock. Um, so we were watching the golf in the morning, and it was, if I remember, it was horrendous that morning, the first day, and it sort of cleared up in the afternoon, and I probably had the better half of the draw. After conquering his nerves to shoot 75 in the first round, Wood followed it up with a round of golf he'll never forget, including a special shot on the 18th hole. Amateur 18, reminisce, Justin rules this one. Oh no, please don't tell me. No, no, no! It's Justin Rose all over again. What a shot for him. Young man from Bristol, plus five. Oh, and he will be delighted about that. 75-70, fantastic. Who said Woods would be? Woods wouldn't be here. Great stuff for him. He'll remember that as long as he lives. An incredible chip in, mirroring Justin Rose's famous shot on the 18th ten years previously, Woods signed for a second round 70, made the cut and was one of two amateurs contending for the silver medal. A solid round of 73 would follow, and suddenly Wood found himself in the top 10 on the leaderboard, heading into Sunday at eight over par, six shots behind the leader, Greg Norman. The silver medal was always Wood's goal, but with his coach in his ear, Wood continued to rise up the leaderboard. Yeah, my coach was, was looking up and, and telling me to try and believe that I could go go close and, and you know, who knows? And you know, to have someone like that in your ear, but in the other side, you're able to control it is just the perfect balance. Wood was paired in the final round with Ian Poulter in the fifth last group in the Open Championship. A thrilling and nerve wracking prospect for any young amateur, but Wood got off to a very solid start. <laughs> Four, four start, par, par, excellent. Must be feeling a bit nervy, must be a little edgy. If Wood had nerves, he certainly wasn't showing them. After playing his first six holes in one over par for the day, Wood found the par three seventh and had a chance for a birdie. What a two, great two, back to eight over. Just two holes later, Wood and Poulter approached the par four ninth hole with putts for birdie. That ninth hole was pretty cool because uh, I think 
Poults hit it into about 10 feet, a really good shot. And then I hit it into about four feet. And he obviously put, putted first, hold it. IT finds the cup. Plus nine. And I was sort of halfway walking into my ball. And he just, after he got his ball out of his hole, he just said to me, knock it in, mate. It's wood for birdie on nine. It's to take him out in 33, one under par. Well done, seven over. Look at that. And I just thought, that's class. That's just, he doesn't have to say that. He was, root, he was just rooting for me and we were getting along great. And I think he probably benefited from me the way I was playing as well. We were both pushing each other to a point. Yeah, because I've had it several times when you're both making birdies, game feels easy. And you know, in the last round of a major, in conditions such as an open, yeah, that's pretty rare. Um, so he, I, I'm sure he must have felt comfortable um, playing together. So that was a pretty special moment there. All of a sudden, Wood was no longer just in pole position for the silver medal, but now in the mix for the title. At plus seven for the championship, Wood sat just two shots off Padraig Harrington's lead, with the final grouping of Norman and Harrington both moving backwards. At just 20 years of age, Wood was bidding to become the youngest Open champion since young Tom Morris nearly 140 years ago. After Wood's approach into the par 4 10th hole, things were looking even better. Chris Wood, 10th fairway, he's found another fairway. It's a lovely setup, good swing. Tall lad, he said himself after the second round, he likes to play in the wind. Look at this shot here. This is another Bobby Jones, an amateur winning the Open. Brilliant. Wood scared the hole, but just failed to capitalise for a birdie, which would have moved the Englishman into one of the strongest positions in the championship with just eight holes to go. Christopher Wood. Three straight bogeys would follow for Wood, however. A tall young man to get down. And now Tom Sherrard's total of plus 14 was the mark for Wood to beat to win the silver medal. Wood managed to steady the ship with a string of pars and a birdie on 17, then moved Wood to plus nine for the championship. Wood for his birdie on 17. Yes, well done. One to go, three down the last, and who knows? That birdie would ensure the Englishman could enjoy his walk up 18 as the top amateur of the championship. With the silver medal secure and realising he could no longer win the championship, Wood and his father watched on as their playing partner, Poulter, looked to be in pole position for his first Open. At, the t at that time, we, I'd sort of realised he, he could win this. He could win this here. And then he, I can't remember how he played 18, but he ended up with about a 20-foot putt for par. And it was at that point that could have been the putt to win the Open. And I remember my dad shaking hands with him and he just said, balls are still, mate, balls are still. <laughs> While most pros watching on believed Poulter had done enough, Harrington's sheer brilliance over the closing hour of play put paid to the postman's chances. The climax finished 3-4. Harrington the champion. Wood cherished the experience of being in the mix at the Open, however, and it was an incredible week for the Bristolian. Claimed the silver medal with a top five finish. The best finish of an amateur this millennium at the Open. 
and the highest since Justin Rose finished fourth at the same course a decade earlier. The leading amateur and winner of the silver medal from Long Ashton is Chris Wood. Having his father on the bag made his experience even more special. The whole week, yeah, was something we sort of look back on. Yeah, it's an amazing week to look back on with your dad. Um, to, yeah, he was there because I sort of I see it really as that sort of got me going really in my career. Um, and yeah, throughout the week, two or three sort of different things happened that the memories of them, yeah, you'll have forever. And like your dad's with you, it's pretty amazing. And uh, he's like a three handicap. So, you know, he sort of knows what he's doing. And it was just, yeah, it was just, it was, it was a pretty amazing week. After the Open in 2008, winning the silver medal and contending for golf's original major as a 20 year old, Wood was excited about his return to the 138th Open at Turnbury. Good morning and welcome to an extraordinary morning on the Ayrshire coast, the start of the 138th Open Championship, the fourth time it's been held here at Turnbury. After rounds of 70, 70 and 72, Wood stood at plus two heading into the final round, six shots behind overnight leader Tom Watson. The sense of deja vu could not be ignored. A year earlier, Wood sat six shots behind an open legend looking to become the oldest ever major winner in history. The situation was the same again, and Wood's playing partner was Justin Rose, the man whose record he nearly eclipsed at Royal Birkdale the year before. This time, however, now a professional, there was no silver medal for Wood to chase. This time Wood had bigger goals. The go- I thought the golf course was fantastic. Um... And I was really enjoying it, obviously. And then I, I, I've been playing pretty good. You know, when you're playing pretty solid, there's always a chance of a score in there and you get a little bit of early momentum and hold the right putt. You, you can you can start sort of making some birdies. On the tee from England, Chris Wood. <laughs> the thrill he had it took us all along for a, a thrilling ride last year. After a steady start of six straight pars, Wood reached the seventh green with an eagle putt. All of a sudden, the Englishman's dreams seemed like they could become a reality. Chris Wood, part the first six. He has this for eagle. Great second shot in. Finished fifth last year, knows what to do. This must be very quick. Go on, go on, go on. Yes, eagle for Wood. Not Woods, Wood. Chris Wood back to level par, and right there. My word, what an exciting passage of play. And I remember Eagle in the seventh, hit a great two iron to about eight or 10 feet. And then I hit probably one of the best drives of my life on the eighth, which was a left long par four, uh, left to right sloping fairway, and the wind was straight off the left. And I mean, to hit the fairway was almost impossible. Um, you know, it could just go a little bit on the wind. It's going to kick right on the fairway. You're in the rough or the hay. And I just hit a hard knuckleball, really. No no shape to it. Down the left half of the fairway. And I, I think I hit a six iron into the green. Now, this is a great shot. You hit a fantastic shot into seven, made eagle. I'd say this was an even better shot. It's a very difficult hole. Stay up. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. Chris Wood. Just the one under par, three behind, three under today after eight. His fifth last year, he knows what this feels like. And I just played two tough holes in three under par and just some real quality shots, um, which obviously then got me got me right up there. Uh, I think I birdied ten as well. Chris Wood at the tenth for a birdie. Swing there left to right. Down, starts to turn. Is it too high? No, it's not. Two under. <laughs> the lanky lad strikes again. 
because he has the advantage of being six or seven holes up the fairway. He's got those tucked away. Great birdie chances followed for Wood on 11 and 12, but two pars kept him at four under for his round and two under for the championship. Just to get to three under. Oh, goodness me. That's a nice par though, isn't it? I mean, at this stage now, if he does nothing worse than par, he'll be very happy at the end of the round. Stand nice and still, please. One more. Thank you. Look at that. Three, 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 four, three, three. No fives yet on the card. Doesn't add up to much. A quick glance at the leaderboard would represent an astonishing sight. Yeah, there it is. Incredible. Chris Wood from England and Tom Watson, two under tied for the lead. A man bidding to become the youngest winner of the Open since 1893, tied with a man bidding to become the oldest. We've been talking all week about uh, the value of experience. Well, this boy's 21 and he was fifth last year. He's looking like he could go four better. Maybe we're overrating experience. I remember he did the same thing last year at Brookdale in the final round. I believe it was the 10th hole, 11th hole, where he ran into a little mistake, but uh, it was a pretty impressive back-to-back -back open. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely amazing. And sitting with some of the American players, and they said from afar, Davis Love actually just said this. He just finished a round of 69. So he almost looks like at times you catch a little glimpse of Chris Wood. He looks like Tom Watson from back in 1977 at Turnberry. Shaggy haired and all. Did you expect anything like this, Ken? From well, you can never tell at the Open as we've seen. I mean, who would have thought Ross Fisher going one way, Chris Woods going the other? It's the sort of beauty of Lynx golf. One bad shot, and suddenly you've got an eight. One good one, and you're heading in the right direction. Bogies, however, on holes 13 and 14, put Wood back to even par for the championship. Starting to go the wrong way for Chris Wood. Just for par. Can he save one? Oh, what a good putt. But the final day of the 138th Open was not a day for predictions. As five different players held a share of the lead during the front nine, Wood, six holes ahead of the final two groups, was not to be deterred. And this man is still far from out of it, despite back-to-back -back bogeys. Par 3, 15th, Chris Wood. Right away on the 15th, he bounced back. Nice pin to get out of this one. All gathers at the back of the green. Oh, look at this shot here. What a shot. Chris Wood. on the back edge. Magnificent shot. Chris Wood. Trying to post the number. Level par four behind at the moment. And here he is, shaggy of hair and strong of heart. The birdie punt at the 15th for Chris Wood. Back to back bogeys at 13 and 14. What a tee shot this was. Looks a bit like Prince Harry. Could be a prince in a few holes. This for birdie. Not far away, it's not far away. Fantastic birdie there. And that will get him up to one under par. Right there. Oh, he must be excited. The fact that he was in there last year stands him in good stead. He'll know the feelings. A par on the 16th and a well-played 17th hole left Wood with 15 feet for birdie to get back to two under for the championship. A lot of good shots. And then Chris Wood for birdie. Just to get within one of the lead. Off the right-hand side and slow. Uh, birdied 17. Stay up, stay up. Oh, yes! Chris Wood was two under. Fantastic. One shot behind, one hole to play. He showed nerves of steel. Just 21 years of age, fifth last year. And his heart will be thumping so hard right now. And got to the 18th, not really knowing the situation, but yeah, you know, you know you're close. You don't, you, know, you don't have to look at a leaderboard. You know you're there or thereabouts, and that's sort of good enough for me uh, up until the point I get to sort of the 18th fairway because I'm trying my hardest, regardless of the situation. And unless a caddy is in your ear saying, "Look, let's just play five yards right of that pin or whatever it is," you trust them. They're the ones for me 
that's how I work best. If they if they know everything that's going on, if someone told me that, there's there's no way I couldn't start thinking about, oh well, what if I win? What if what am I got to say? What? Yeah, naturally you would. I, I think. Yeah, you know, the feeling of holding that claret jug. What what's it going to be like? Yeah, you know, all those things start going into into your head. I for me, and then you you've made a five or you've made whatever it is, and before you know it, you're fourth and you can't win. And uh, you're like, oh well, well done, Chris. There's what are you doing there? Um, so trying to stay focused on that side of things is really important for me. A par on eighteen and Wood would set a marker that would be extremely tough to beat. A par on 18, and that could be enough for the 21-year-old to win the claret jug. And I hit two iron um, down the right half, and it just I think it just ran into the first cut, and I had about 210, I think, um, to the pin. And we thought oh, it might be a bit of a jumping lie, so I hit nine iron. Straight over the back. Well, Chris Wood kept it safe off the tee. It's given him a shot in, and yeah, beautiful shot out of that right hand rough, but just rolling over the back. Now, it's a maker, it's a holeable chip back into the wind. I mean, I flagged it as well, and it was such a good shot. And me and Dave have spoken about it you know, over the years, and we're like, well, <laughs> 210 yards, you're never thinking wedge, are you? It's like, um, so that shot will live with me forever as you yeah, know just the the just the wrong bit of luck i suppose at, at the wrong time you know if it doesn't jump as much it's on the green 20 feet away or whatever it may be what a wonderful performance by this lad 21 years old fifth last year aiming to do better this year but wow. he's known he was right in there for a while in this round Hasn't faltered. A couple of bogeys on 13 and 14, but then birdies on 15 and 17. And he's looked rock solid, really. That must have looked great to a mark in the air. That shot was just right out of the flag, wasn't no, it? No hard. What a wonderful strike. It's a wonderful feeling this, walking up the 18th, and when you had a great open crowd to either side. You know, if it's meant to be, uh, there's the, the only thing I feel good about is really that I wouldn't have that shot back. I wouldn't want to play it again. There's nothing more I could have done. Um, I, I hit a great shot. It was two yards left of the pin or right of the pin or whatever it may be. It was down the down the line. Um, it just come out like a missile um, out of the semi rough, and yeah, there's really not much control you can do about that on a, on a especially on a links golf course. And then it ended up in sort of foot long rough, I think. Just needed another ounce. Collector's thoughts, he can still win the open if he holds that. There's only one shot behind. And I didn't get up and down. Chris Wood. Can he read it? Can he read it now? on his face he's clubhouse leader minus one and missed the playoff by shot so yeah that was that was probably the hardest sort of thing to take I've had to take in my career really agonisingly Wood took five he would again tie the lead at one under par late on in the championship as players fell back 
But eventually, Watson and Stuart Sink both reached two under par, with the latter taking home the claret jug. <laughs>